All right, we are here at my Vermihut indoor worm bin, and we're gonna do a couple things here. We're going to check on the bin that is right underneath here. It's the foraging or oldest bin that we have. We're gonna check on the cocoon nursery just because we put a little piece of banana peel and some tea leaves in there. And then finally, we'll do our normal feeding where we dig this all up, and I'm gonna feed in a unique way. So first things first, let's pull this off to look at the foraging tray. So the first thing that's catching my eye is this is a piece of apple from when we did an apple versus sweet potato experiment. And let's go ahead and dig that up. And you also see some worms around here because they do go up and down through the holes within the vermi hut trays. And you can see the cross stitch pattern, I think, from those holes. But let's go ahead and dig in there. And it's looking like this is mostly peel and some of the coffee grounds, it looks like. But let's, let's dig right in there. All right, so the apple is mostly gone, if that is the apple, because now I'm having my doubts because I see a lot of bedding, but I think that the peel section that we pulled out was like this part. I think that was the apple. So let's just kind of agitate this and get this going. Here's a peach seed, which I guess I'll get out when we harvest, but we'll kind of dig around and you can see there's worms in here. So the worms don't just go to the very top tray to feed. They go all around and what I'm seeing is big, fat, chunky ones like this red wiggler right here. You can see it's a little bit lighter on the bottom of it, and on the top, it's a little bit darker. So let's just agitate. I'm not really looking for anything specific. I'm just trying to aerate this out a little bit because it's been under here for, I think, somewhere around 29 days. And there we go. It's It feels great. The moisture level is fantastic. There's a... A grapevine, of course. Those things last forever. But that will about do it. I'm just gonna level this out because I'm gonna put the tray back on. So we've kind of leveled this out and we'll be ready to put the top back on. Right, here we go. All right, next we're going to check on the cocoon nursery. And last time we were in here, we put a piece of banana and some tea leaves in here. And I just wanna see if that ended up gathering the babies. So I'm just gonna dig in here. And any babies I find, I will put into the vermi hut, which is right below it. I thought I saw a worm, in fact I did. Right here is our first little baby worm that we found. So in it goes. I'd be real surprised if they got through that whole banana, although it has been nine days. So, you know, perhaps there's enough babies in here that they did. Another worm, again, I'm not gonna go crazy with this. Oh, I do. All right, I don't see the banana peel anywhere and I'm doing a pretty good job of getting through the middle here. So I must have taken too long to check back in because they apparently were hungry enough to totally take care of that banana and another baby. Just so many babies in here. Makes sense, it's a cocoon nursery. That's a really tiny one. It probably hatched maybe less than a week ago. I'm going to just set this back up and we'll probably check on this another two weeks and we'll probably have a lot more babies in here. All right, so newspaper goes back on as well as the plastic to keep the moisture in. And now let's get to our regularly scheduled vermi hut feeding. We've taken the cocoon nursery off and the first thing I'm seeing is some of this newspaper has castings on it. I don't know if this is a hole all the way down or they just deposited it on up and it looks like it is. That's they have started to eat the newspaper and it does feel like a depression here. So I'm feeling they got through that feeding zone right here pretty well. Let's kind of fold this up if we can. And <laughs> this may be one of its last days for being a top cover. So let's go ahead and dig in. I'll go right for the feeding zone. And of course, right away, lots of worms. Love it. Feels just ever so slightly warm. Wow, look at that. Look at that, nine days and they are still attacking the feeding that we got here. And it was a pretty decent feeding. It was bread, we had some lettuce stock, apples, papaya, onions, all kinds of good stuff in here. And we put some more bedding down too. But yeah, look at that right there. Just tons of worms feeding on, probably a bit of apple. I think, yep, here's the apple top i believe and they've gotten a good portion of it but we'll put that over there and let's keep going through here apples apples take a while i mean 
they, you would think that they would just kind of plow through them, and they do. They really like them. They're always surrounding them, but it takes a while for them. Look at that. That is just remarkable. I love seeing the worms like that. This top tray has only been on here for 29 days, and we have just a ton of castings here. Now, when I built this tray, I put it underneath all the trays on the vermi hut to get inoculated, and it sat there for about 39 days. So this tray was well inoculated when it got started. And here's a banana stem. They take a while, of course, but let's just quickly go through and turn over everything. I mean, we're just gonna see so many worms as I do this, but I just wanna kind of get through it and air it out. Now, this isn't something that the worms enjoy whatsoever at all. In fact, a lot of people just put a feeding in, a month later, check on it, and they get a ton of castings. Looking good, looking really good. Just a great moisture level, great consistency. Get these back corners. There we go, into the, this is a toilet paper tube roll, and they really do like to get inside there, and I don't know if they're making a home or it's just a, safe place to be but they definitely enjoy those i don't enjoy them because they take a little bit longer to break down and i've started shredding them there's another pocket of one the other thing i'm doing is i'm spreading out the food when it's all concentrated in one area it can get heated up so by spreading it i'm taking that temperature range out of it this is what was left of a whole banana two feedings ago we put a whole banana in fact it had created a worm ball and now they have pretty much taken it all the way down to the skin. Here's the what would be the flower end of a banana. And then you can see almost like a little pocket in there. And there's a few worms inside that banana peel. Lots of, I mean, you just pick a pile of worms and there you go. Just tons of worms. I went to the grocery store and they had some pears. And I picked some up and inside of the container that they came in had a, some writing on it that said compostable and recyclable. I thought, all right, let's see if that's true. Let's get one. In fact, I pulled a couple of them and my wife said that I'm a trash panda, like a raccoon in the trash can, but I pulled a couple of them out and I'm gonna do experiments. I've got one going in my outdoor bin. I'm gonna put one here. So I just wanna see what they all look like. And here they are, here's what it looks like. So it's almost, to me, looks like it's made of the same material as an egg carton, but it's a little bit more sturdy. So what we're gonna do is put that straight in here. And it has some holes so the worms can get in. And I'm gonna put all the food in here and then I'll put some paper and the bedding back on top. But I'm not gonna fill this with bedding. Well, first worm's in there. What we're gonna do is give this feeding. This was all frozen and thawed out so it's a little brown, but we've got apples, bananas, tomato, lots of lettuces, papaya. And then underneath a lot of this is some potato skins. So let's go ahead and start putting this inside. There's the tomato, apple, banana and grape, papaya, which is just so colorful. I wish it tasted as colorful as it is. Some of the banana peels and the potato peels. A couple of grapes are in there. In fact, we put grapes in last time and I didn't see them this time. And then some of the liquid. I'm just gonna push that down. And then we're gonna put some shredded cardboard on it. That is a lot of liquid in there. And hopefully some of this will absorb it. Would have been better, I guess, if this was underneath. Maybe next time I do something like this, I'll put the shredded cardboard down inside of this and then the food scraps. Let's go ahead and add some coffee. There's the coffee. And then of course we'll add the grit, which is just pulverized eggshells. I just pulverized them in a magic bullet that I have. I've actually got affiliate links in the description and in the first comment. But let's go ahead and bury this. And this will be neat. We're going to compare this to my outdoor worm bin. In fact, if you want to subscribe, I've got three playlists. Hit the bell and you'll be notified when I put a new video on. I pretty much is, I'm doing an experiment with all three bins. Usually it's just an experiment within one, but this time I want to see how the different bins react to this kind of baiting almost way of feeding. If the worms come in and we'll also be able to see what those individual food scraps do and how much castings they produce versus just seeing the castings kind of grow throughout the bin. So I think it'll be an interesting experiment. And I also want to see how quickly those trays break down. I think this is really good right here. I've got it buried and we'll also see if this becomes a depression. So let's put the newspaper on and I hope everybody's having a great day. 
and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.